Welcome to the offseason here in the Penn State Basketball Dynasty. Now, before hopping into Penn State's offseason, we first check out the national championship matchup between the Michigan Wolverines and the Tennessee Volunteers. This game is highlighted by, highlighted by the player of the year in Hunter Dickinson, 18 points per game, 6.6 .6 rebounds, 4.8 assists, 1.3 blocks and steals. He was magnificent. Getting into the game, Dickinson kind of took over pretty early, but he took a ton of shots. And you can just see right here, turning the ba basketball over, but his fingerprints were all over the ball in the first half. Here he gets a rebound, pushes it up court. Tennessee up by two. He pulls up for three. That one's off. But you have to think that the woes will not continue much longer. Dickinson starts to take over in the second half. Michigan down by five. He gets the and one right there. But look at his shooting so far in the game. Five of 20, just 11 points. But Dickinson says, uh-uh, we got to take this over. Here in the fourth quarter, here's a drive, and he gets fouled. Michigan down by three at that point. Now down by one. Dickinson, tough drive. He gets his own rebound, tips it in. And now it is a one-point Michigan lead. Now six minutes to go. Here is Dickinson hailing the ball from the outside. Good dish inside to Reed. And that one will put the Michigan Wolverines up by five. What a good find, a great play right there. And he slips inside, and that's a great find by Dickinson. Here with about four minutes to go. Dickinson pull up from the outside. That's good. And Dickinson ends up assisting or scoring on 12 straight points at that point. But here he is with less than a minute to go. Working around Dickinson from the outside. Dagger three. Hunter Dicker, Dicker, man, I can't even say his name. Dickinson ends up winning the MVP of the national championship and brings a natty to Michigan. Dickinson finished the game 28, 13 and five, 10 of 37 from the field. And it went two of 15 from three. I mean, had a terrible shooting day, but he just kept shooting and it ended up working out as they get the national championship here. Congratulations to Michigan. Well-deserved for sure. And we'll see what happens in the offseason. So I did establish some recruiting rules and just some offseason rules. And I kind of thought about it a little bit. And we're going to have to do away with them. The main reason why is because I went through like a sim offseason. It just didn't work out. Like it was just way too much work to, you know, was it really worth it? So here's what we're going to do. First team and second team, all NBA players will declare for the draft. No if, ands, or buts. And then the third team NBA, those will be guys that decided to stay in school. So these five guys here on the second team, the five guys on the first team, including Dickinson, who just won a natty, they're going to the NBA. These five here, if they're not already seniors, they will be staying. So uh, that's kind of how we will do it here in this series with declaring and going to the NBA. But that means we will not be without, or we will be without Shiro Takihara. It's Shiro, I, I understand that Shiro now, but Shiro has been, you know, kind of up and down. I'm surprised he was a second team All American, and it's likely because he led the NCAA in assists at 6.1. But I definitely had some weird shooting nights with him. I mean, there were nights I couldn't hit anything, and just he was just inconsistent. But he's on to the NBA. Evan Vasquez is probably going to assume the point guard duties, uh, assuming that we don't draft a point guard, but we'll see because he did average 5.3 assists, and that's really, really good. I know he's a good shooter. Uh, maybe he plays off ball, but I do actually like him handling the basketball, so he might actually be the point guard going into next season. He played every single game except one. He didn't start. Tyrone Jones, he was really, really good on the inside. I think one thing I want to see with him is to be that like dominant for I want him to be dominant down there. And he is going into his senior year, I believe. So this will be uh, kind of a crucial point in his career to see like, you know, what kind of player he's going to be. Can he bring this team to the NCAA tournament? We'll see. I don't know who's going to be the leader going into next season. Malachi Macklin was interesting. He was a guy that I, you know, 
wanted to kind of work an offense around a little bit obviously not being the focal point but because he does so many different things well i definitely you know just wanted him to kind of shine everywhere on the court and he's going to be a junior this year so we'll have two more years to play with him a little bit and he skips interesting guy like he's not a great shooter but he plays good defense uh and he's just like a hustle guy and I'm actually excited to see what he turns into. Maybe he progresses in the offseason. Andy Skips is just a freshman also, so three years of development, it could bring him some places. A couple of seniors on the squad, three to be exact. Michelle Beaufoy is one of them. I really like Michelle. Like, he stretches the floor. Remember, when we had him coming off the bench, he was shooting 31% from three. He got that up to 30% almost 38 percent from three as a starter so that's exactly probably what i'm going to be looking for in the draft a guy that can stretch the floor and a guy that has some length as well jose springer is interesting he is a sophomore but could he possibly spring up into the starting lineup next year i don't know but it depends on i think on how the draft goes malik banks i think is just going to be our sixth man i just love what he does coming off of the bench he is one of my favorite players on the team six foot four he's got size too and i think this guy can like i said be a ball handler also he shot uh 33 from three hopefully that gets up to closer to 40 next year Ben Layden was a senior. He played uh, very seldomly throughout the season, but he did give us some decent minutes. He averaged 4.7 to 3 rebounds. Martin Posey Jr. is interesting. I don't know what his role is going to be going into next year, but he is a guy to keep your eye on. He will be a senior. I wish I would have played Denzel Morris a little sooner because when I started him that final game, like he was a beast. He almost had a double-double in that game. Malik Justice, a young guard, he will get an opportunity in the future. I don't really have too much to say, but he's going to be a junior next year on him. And then Vernon Harris was a guy that probably played the least this year, along with Devin Parham, who uh, both of those guys are seniors and will be departing away. So a lot of you guys submitted your draft uh, prospects, obviously the high school draft, we will call it. And these are guys that will be coming into the league. And I tried to rename the top 60 as far as 2K rank. And kind of how we will do this is we will run it through a draft. So you guys are probably wondering, what about NBA free agency? Like, I know this is not a true mod, but it's obviously the college teams in here. What we will do is that we will have a high school draft. So a real high school draft. And then there will be no free agency because that's just not realistic. The catch is that... We will turn trades on, only control the Nittany Lions during the draft so that that will simulate the transfer portal. So we will have guys that possibly will switch up teams and get traded away. Those will simulate transfers throughout uh, the offseason. I might actually turn it on throughout the entire offseason, but for this offseason alone, I turned trades on just for the draft, which will hopefully simulate those transfers in real life. So looking at, you know, some of these prospects, you know, obviously what I am looking for is a guy that can stretch the floor and that has length. And we do have a top 10 pick here in the draft. The first guy I'm looking at here is Kyle Tucson. He is listed as a two guard. I'm probably going to move him to the three at six foot seven. Like he would be a guy that definitely fits. He is a top 10 prospect, or at least an average top 10 prospect. One guy I want to look at later in the draft, his draft rank is only 75, but Adelson Covington, a guy that can shoot the basketball like no other. He had an excellent combine. He went 20 of 25 from a standard NBA three. So that is really, really good. I could get good value of him late in the draft. Then there's some other guys here like Jalen St. Brown. He is one of the top prospects in the draft, but right now he is actually 31 draft rank i don't know how far he's gonna fall but one thing i like about him is that he definitely can shoot he is a definitely a marksman on the court can hit any shot that's his strengths so without further ado let's get into the draft so here we go and kansas has the number one pick in the draft and a lot of guys will go number one in this series but there may not be a better prospect than Matthew Davis Spencer. We already saw him play in high school in the recruiting special. 
He is amazing. He goes to one of the best programs in the country in Kansas. Kansas, with him alone, could be one of the best teams in the country right now, maybe number one or two. Aaron Hoffman goes number two. So kind of what we saw earlier in the season kind of stuck true. Those two go one and two. Now to the rest of the field. Vakan Kolati will go to Ohio State, so they will get a new star. And maybe this will propel Ohio State to play for a uh, NCAA tournament spot. Who knows? Debrickashaw Camacho goes to Florida State. He is a guy that can run the floor. He's not a great shooter right now, but a guy that can run the show. Mike Blackwell, a guy, a back-to-the-basket big man going to Gonzaga. Maybe they're, they're just replacing Drew Tim at this time and bringing in a good freshman. We're up in two more picks. Kyle Tucson, who we had our eye on. He goes to Louisville with the number six pick, and he is one of the best shooting uh, guards or forwards in the draft. And then before us, Florida will select Billy Balzano, and now we are on the clock here at number eight. We got a top 10 pick this year. And we have three draft picks in this draft. So we will select number eight overall. We will select eight in the second round. And then we select uh, later in the second round. I think it's pick 50. So here we go. You know, looking at, you know, who we're kind of targeting here. I want a guy that can shoot. I want a guy that can stretch the floor as a big. But we need to look at who are the top available players here. And we do have some guys fully scouted. Jalen St. Brown was ranked number 31 in the rankings, but we have him 100% scouted. And he comes in at 79 overall, which would put him at the top of our roster as far as overall. 96 three-point shot. I mean, that is something you have to consider here. We had an issue with shooting the three. We relied on Vasquez a lot and Michel Beaufoy. But I just like what I see from him, and he's definitely in consideration now that I see that. Number two guy we have fully unlocked is Dexter Monroe. His ceiling is world be free, and his uh, floor, I believe, was Steve, Steve Kerr. He has a 92 three-point shot. He is an all-around shooter as well. He's got 87 mid-range. But one thing that sticks out with him, his speed with the ball is 98. So he is going to be a guy that can push the ball up the court can get to the basket quickly. He can be a guy that really just has an all-around offensive game. So I think one thing about him is his wingspan is 6'9". Jalen St. Brown's only 6'2". So he's got a definitely, you know, a different size advantage along with his speed and shooting over St. Brown. Another top guy we have 100% scouter is Spencer Denny, but his three-point shot is at 69. So I just immediately, you know, do not even consider getting him. And then there's Derek Wilson, a guy that is a scorer at all three levels. He can score inside as a guard, six foot three, so he's a little bit taller than Jalen St. Brown and Dexter Monroe. And he is a good option also. And if you guys are wondering about age, they will all be 19 going in as fre uh, freshmen also. And then there's a pretty good guard in Ben Harper. I want to see a little bit more out of him. Like it would have to wow me to be over Monroe and St. Brown right now. And then one more guy I want to consider here is Nye Helton. He's pretty good. Like I don't hate this, but 86, three, six, six foot eight. I like it, but not as a number eight pick probably. So I decide to pick between Jalen St. Brown and Dexter Monroe. And we decide to settle on Dexter Monroe. They say he's one of the most athletic and he is the best in the class with his vertical at a 44 inch vertical. So that just shows you the athleticism along with the shooting. He brings a lot to the table. Cam Jackson goes to Michigan State. So you see, you know, a lot of the subscriber submitted guys are going early on. And we get our first, our first transfer. It's going to be Zach Eady going from Purdue to Auburn. So, wow, they do execute this trade. And now we see what this looks like. Auburn will receive, uh, obviously, uh, Eady. He goes over for that 10th uh, pick. 
and Purdue ends up selecting J.C. Davis. That is awesome. We get our first transfer right there, and honestly, one of the best guys in the NCAA right now. Eric Price to Illinois. He was a back-to-the-basket big man. Now up next is Indiana, and they go with J.J. Shuttlesworth, who not as great of a shooter as J.J. Shuttlesworth, but pretty good shooter. Ben Harper is another guy that was a good shooter that we saw early on in this video. He goes to Memphis. Reuben Hunter gets drafted. And Major Hart, the first big man, the first uh, true big man besides the number two pick in the draft, goes off of the board. He was a true center, though. So Major Hart is a true center. He's the first one, and he goes off the board. We get our second transfer. It's uh, Matty S Sissoko. He goes to uh, Michigan State. Actually, he goes away from Michigan State. And then they end up selecting a big man anyway, Jerome Landry. Cole Walker, another big man. The first set or the second center goes off with the board. Leonard Best, a two guard who is a pretty good shooter. And then there's Derek Wilson. He goes off with the board. He will go to Duke. So I can't wait for them that matchup at least to face him. That should be a lot of fun. He is a great shooter. Arkansas lost a couple of guys due to seniors being uh moving away and then having a couple of all americans they get two picks in a row arizona had a kind of a down year they will need a bounce back with a good draft here and then getting towards you know the best better uh teams in the ncaa this year drew smith goes to villanova theo toscano who is also a subscriber recruit i forgot to add the y there but he goes to purdue so they replace zach Eady with toscano Ross Farrell Jr. goes to Arkansas. And then here is Jalen St. Brown. I am shocked at this. He went all the way back in the back of the first round, even though despite we unlocked that 79 overall, who is actually better than Dexter Monroe's 78 overall. But he's going to be, you know, pretty fun to see play. Can't wait to see him. Dexter Monroe versus Jalen St. Brown. That matchup is going to be pretty fun. And the wrapping up the end of the first round, Paulo Pessoa goes to UNC. And then the national champions end up getting Keon Kane. And he will hopefully, you know, replace, you know, Hunter Dickinson for Michigan as well. So second round action now. And Kansas has back-to-back -back picks pretty early on. Nye Helton goes off the board. I was definitely still looking at Nye Helton. I said he was good. But I didn't consider him at the eighth pick. If he would have been on the board here, I definitely would have got him. And now we get to our pick after Sebastian King goes to Michigan State. And here we are. You know, we got the point guard. So I do want the stretch four. I think that's what I'm looking for now. At least we have the shooting in the backcourt now with Evan Vasquez, Malik Banks off the bench, and then Dexter Monroe. So I'm definitely looking at a big man here. I don't have guys fully scouted, so I am doing a little bit of the guesswork here. But one guy that I really, really like is Senso Mancicelli. Mancinelli out of Italy. I said Mancicelli. Wow. Mancinelli. He is actually really, really good, but his ranking is kind of all over the place. His ceiling is Al Harrington. Juan Her Hernan Gomez is going to be his floor. He has a knack for getting steals, hits the three with consistency, and is a good low post scorer. I really, really like that uh, all-around offensive guy. We only have him about 50% scouted, but we end up going with Senso Mancinelli. Mancinelli. Wow, I need to get that name right before the end of this episode. But it looks like he just wasn't scouted enough, and just an international guy, he ends up coming over to the States. Bob Murphy and Sidney Cassell go to Purdue. They had a lot of picks in this draft. Maybe why, you know, they wanted to move on from Zach Eadies because they wanted to pick a lot in this one and just rebuild the program, get some young guys in there. As you can see, we have the number 54 pick coming up, and we are on the clock again for our third selection. And I highlighted Allison Co Covington before this draft. I just love what he is. Benny Johnson is a ceiling. Fred Hoiberg is his floor. One of the best pure shooters. I just want shooters this year. Like, that's one thing that we did not have, and I will not hesitate. I'm running the card up to the table. And he was one of the most talented prospects coming out of high school, according to uh, uh, the analysts here. And I hope so, because if he can contribute, 
I don't think he's a starter because of what our backcourt looks like right now. But coming off the bench, he's going to be an awesome shooter. And obviously, in case of injury, he's going to have to step up. So that is going to do it. The last pick is Daryl Harden. And the Jayhawks have a great draft. They draft an 89 overall two guard. And he is really, really good. But Kalati ends up being 87 for the Buckeyes. So very, very good pick right there at number three. Dexter Monroe is 79 overall. I thought it said 78 during the draft. So it just adjusted to 79. I guess it has to do with your accuracy with your scouting. Derek Wilson ends up being 78. So he's actually not bad at all. Spencer Denny goes in the 20s. He ends up being 77. Jalen St. Brown ends up being 78 overall. And then Kane ends up being pretty good for uh, the national champions there at the end of the first round. In the second round, I want to see who has the highest overall here. Lucas Gordon goes to Kansas. So Kansas has an excellent draft. They get Gordon. They get Haynes. And then obviously uh, Matthew there at the top of the draft. And then looking at us, Adelson Covington ends up being 71 overall. Obviously, we will adjust his age, but I think we did okay in this draft. And we will look at, you know, the big man who we drafted first in the second round a little bit closer in a little bit. But looking at our progression here in the offseason, one thing that I did want is for Malachi Macklin to possibly turn into a stretch four because I'm not exactly sure about our draft and the big man that we drafted so he will have to be that at least for this year he's going to be a junior so i'm not too worried about it andy skips looks like he had a bad progression i think this is uh showing the progression throughout the season not just in the offseason i'm not exactly sure let me know down in the comment section if you know that but you can just see tyrone jones got better at drawing the foul over the season uh as that went on his hands got better so that's good evan vasquez he actually went down in quite a few ratings, but went up six with his three-point shot to 91. So we have a 98 three-point shooter and a 98 and 91 in our backcourt. And this is kind of what it's going to look like. You know, Dexter Monroe and Evan Vasquez could switch. I think right now I'm leaning Monroe as the point guard. I guess we'll have to see. I had to kind of improvise here. Jose Springer, I did not know if he would be a starter this year, but he's going to start there for now. I imagine that spot being interchangeable, just trying out different lineups. And then Macklin and Jones, they assume the starting four and five. Malik Banks will be the sixth man this year. Andy Skips is pretty good on defense, but not good enough of a shooter to put be in the lineup. And then I will try to get some minutes to Adelson Cov Covington. I like him coming off of the bench, and he he and Banks will be the first two guards off the bench. So I definitely want to stretch the floor a lot this year. That's kind of a goal of mine. And then Mancinelli will obviously get some minutes, but he is one of the few big men on the team. So he will get about 15, 60 minutes right out of the gate, even though he's only 69 overall, 70 overall. Hopefully that progresses uh, to something better. We do have a couple of undrafted uh, high school prospects, so I will look back at the submissions and uh, rename those to three of the random submissions that did not make the draft as well. So that will do it here for the offseason. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys think of my draft selections. I really do like uh, Addison coming off of the bench. I think he's going to be a guy that can contribute scoring. And then, obviously, Dexter Monroe. I'm excited to see what he looks like. 98 speed with the ball. Can shoot the lights out also. It's going to be fun. So that's going to do it here for the offseason. Ready for season two. Hit subscribe. Hit that like button. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. I like getting money. I got time to get it. Talking on me so my car's a tenny. Dancing with the devil. I don't bargain with it. Bobbing in a dash and the stick is with it. And I hit the four or five on the wet side. But I'm from the east side. This how we slide. This how we ride. Yeah, yeah. This how we ride.